When I was a sophomore in high school and 16 years old, I created the Ebola assay card, which is a temperature independent, portable, rapid, and visual test for Ebola, for which I won the grand prize at the 2015 Google Science Fair. And this video is showing how it's working. The healthcare worker would put the serum sample on the first load spot and then water on the other load spots. Chemicals are released, and if the person is in fact positive for Ebola, there will be a blue color change as shown here, followed by a yellow color change confirming that result. The load spots are shaped so weirdly so that it has no language barriers and it's a totally universally comprehensive process. Oh, thank you. Um, so you might be thinking, why did I do this? Um, I actually took a science research course at my high school and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So at the advice of my teacher, I looked in the news, and it's kind of going back to the other talk we heard, but I was just really drawn to the media hysteria and fear surrounding the Ebola outbreak. And instead of looking at it from this lens of fear, I wanted to look at it from a perspective that allowed me to see a solution. So a little bit of background on the 2014 outbreak is that it was 40 times larger than any previous outbreak, with over 11,000 killed as a result. And while these numbers are shocking, they don't begin to really reflect the ripple effects that result as result because of them, such as the socioeconomic fabric of these areas being destroyed. And now we're really seeing an emergence of a lost generaliz lost generation of people who are at risk for exploitation and marginalization. So what I really wanted to do looking at this and thinking I need a project, I wanted to find a way to limit these effects. And the best way to do that is through asymptomatic diagnostic tools. This means tools that are able to diagnose someone before they're showing symptoms and before they're contagious. So if you're able to isolate them, not only are you able to break the cycle of transmission, but you're also able to increase their likelihood of survival. So I began looking at what are our current asymptomatic diagnostic tools and why aren't they slowing the exponential growth that this outbreak seems to be exhibiting. And that's when I found the ELISA kit. An ELISA kit is an accurate and preferred method of currently diagnosing Ebola. It works, as this graphic shows, by having a piling of chemicals known as reagents in the presence of a sample. And if that person does have Ebola, it will change color. And while it's very accurate, there's a series of limitations that really prevent it from being used on the mass scale that we need. It's not portable. It needs electricity to be read, and it needs a lab setting, and it needs trained medical personnel as well. Also, it's very expensive, costing around $1,000. And the biggest barrier I saw was its temperature dependency, meaning it needs an unbroken chain of refrigeration from point of manufacture to point of administration. So looking at this barrier, first I just wanted to make an ELISA kit temperature independent. And, that, and that's when I actually found a TED Talk done by Professor Fio Amanetto on the silk fibroin. And silk fibroin is basically just the protein from a silk cocoon, as shown here, and it has a ton of properties, but one of them is that when you mix a protein with it, it is able to stabilize it and make it chemi chemically stabilized. So that's the refrigeration that I needed. So I applied this silk fibroin to the traditional pro protocol of the ELISA kit, and I was able to make the ELISA kit temperature independent. But through doing this, I saw that the well plate format of the ELISA kit is really another huge constraint of the current test. So what I wanted to do was take this manual piling of reagents and instead put it on a new format as a lateral flow system. So I began designing lateral flow tests. Here is just an initial prototype with dyes. And then I actually went on the computer and started designing it with exact dimensions. And this is my final prototype with the dyes on the load, spot, load spots, and that's actually where the silk film is. So in summary, as compared to the ELISA test, my test is $5 compared to the $1,000 of the ELISA test. It takes <laughs> 30 minutes compared to the two hours of the ELISA test. It's portable and more sustainable using just filter paper, photo paper, exact amounts of reagents, 
and a little bit of water as compared to the plastics and wasteful reagents. It is also temperature independent, needing no refrigeration, and it's a totally universal process so that it can decentralize testing location and also be administered within an area by people in that area, and you don't necessarily have to be a trained medical person. No. As I continue my research, I'm currently developing a salivary-based test for Lyme disease because if you're able to have it be a saliva-based test, then it can not only be a home test, but it also limits the risk to the healthcare worker significantly. And because this is based on the ELISA chemistry, theoretically it can be applied to any disease for which there is an ELISA kit, including celiac disease, Zika, and certain cancer markers. As I have gone through this process, I've really seen the importance of asymptomatic tools in order to decentralize testing locations and really slow the growth of outbreaks like the 2014 Ebola outbreak and the Zika outbreak and outbreaks that are in the future. And this contributes to the larger global goals, which are healthcare access and healthcare equity, and enable for us in order for us to achieve these goals, we really have to not only accept the benefits that come with globalization and interconnectedness, but also assume the responsibilities and realize that whether we believe it or not, we all have the capacity to be, the capacity to be catalysts for change. And I think this is really underscored by a quote by President Obama, which is, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Thank you.